read the word of God, uh, we are going to pray as we give reverence to God's word. Let's pray. Our loving Lord, thank you so much for your faithfulness to us. Thank you, Lord, because uh, even in these uh, difficult times, you've shown your love to us. Thank you so much for your faithfulness. I pray that the Holy Spirit will continue to work in our midst, guide us, Bless us, O Lord God, and direct us always. I pray, for our Lord, that you will uh, please give me wisdom, the power, the authority, Lord, as I uh, share your word to your people today. Holy Spirit, be the one to uh, give us your grace and understanding. In Jesus' name, Amen. amen. Now, the, the everybody I believed is familiar with his uh, parable, the parable of a fig tree. I've never seen this uh, kind of tree personally. But again, uh, in the old times, uh, this uh, kind of tree was uh, planted beside the uh, wheat, actually. So, here in verse 6, the Bible tells us, can we go there, please? He spake also this parable, a certain man had a fig tree. Planted in his vineyard, and he came and sought fruit thereon, and found none. And then said he unto the dresser of his vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree, and find none. Cut it down, why cumbereth it the ground? And he answering and said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also, till I shall dig about it and dung it. And if it bear fruit, well, and if not, then after that thou shalt cut it down. Now, according to Leviticus chapter 19, 23 to 25, shall we go there please? Leviticus chapter 19, 23 to 25, And when ye shall come into the land, and shall have planted all manner of trees for good, then ye shall count the fruit thereof as uncircumcised, Three years shall it be as uncircumcised unto you, it shall not be eaten of. But in the fourth year all the fruit thereof shall be holy to praise the Lord withal. And in the fifth year shall ye eat of the fruit thereof, that it may yield unto you the increase thereof. I am the Lord your God. So it is very clear here that fruit from newly planted trees was not eaten here the first three years. So in the fourth year, the crops belong to the Lord. And then a farmer would not get any fig for himself until the fifth year. So this is very clear here. But here, we can see that this man had now been waiting for several years. I would say seven years. But again, no wonder that he wanted to uh, cut down the fruitless tree. Now, the parable here has an application to, individ uh, to each every one of us, each individual, as well as to the nation of Israel. Now, we have to understand here that God is gracious. Amen? God is gracious and long-suffering towards his people. Let us read Second Peter chapter 3, verse 9. The Bible tells us here, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us, word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Amen? God is gracious. It's very clear here and does more than enough to encourage us to do something for Him and to work for Him faithful, faithfully as we go on in this journey. But again, we can also see here that in Matthew chapter 3, verses 7 to 10, but we're not going to read there. You can take downloads if you are doing it. He has a very right to cut us down. Yes. God can cut us down. But again, in His mercy, He spared us. 
Yet we must not presume upon His kindness and the long suffering uh, of the Lord. For again, the Bible tells us that the day of judgment will finally come. Now, I hope that again, but this tree, but the tree also reminds us of God's special goodness to the people of Israel. We can see that in Isaiah chapter five. Verses 1 to 7. But again, let us read Romans 9, 1 to 5. Romans 9, 1 to 5. I say the truth in Christ, I lie not. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I could wish that myself wish uh, were accursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption, and the glory, and the covenants, and the giving of the law, and the service of God, and the promises, whose are the fathers, and of whom, as concerning the flesh, Christ came, who is over all, God blessed forever. Amen. Remember that not only of His uh, grace, not only because He is long-suffering God, but as well as God's patience at the same time. Amen? You know, God waited for years during His uh, uh, earthly ministry. But again, the nation did not here produce fruit. Oh, this is what happened here. Did not produce fruit. And then He waited for 40 years more before He allowed here the Roman uh, Empire or the Roman armies to destroy the temple. And during those years as well, the church gave the nation a powerful witness of the gospel message. And then after that, finally, the tree was cut down. Now, take note that it is significant that the parable was open-ended so that the listener will supply oh, the conclusion. But again, as we continue to study in these verses this morning, take note that God is seeking fruit. God is seeking fruit and He will accept no substitute and the time to repent is now. The time to change. The next time that you, we will uh, uh, try to uh, really explore here, we can see that from barrenness, there also a time that we can go on to blessedness. Now, let me remind you that what everyone wants, if it not craves, it is always a blessing. Take note that in a give uh, that we have a choice. And we will always uh, choose something that is for our own good. It can take many shapes. It can take many sizes. Some of us will uh, uh, be uh, pursuing for money. And others will be pursuing for peace as well as security. And still others. It might be friends. But again, we all want it. But we cannot get it all. Or know how. Take note that God has designed life to make choices. You can, cho uh, you can choose the right and you can choose the wrong. But even if we find ourselves in this, this opposite stream of life, God can always turn things around. That is why Jesus says here in uh, Matthew 13 verse 12, He said, for whosoever hath to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken away, even that he hath. Take note that this is the secret here. To get it on what God is doing all of the time. You know, the question here is, how about us? How about you?
make note that God has designed in life in such a way that there is a right way and a wrong way. Choices. No, that is what is best for you. Maybe others will say, oh, brother, maybe, maybe this is the reason why there are some people who are successful and there are some people who are not successful. But again, this is, what, uh, this is not what God is trying to point out here from this text. Because it appears that the farmer here is not actually good. It looks like the farmer here doesn't have that ability or have that uh, idea in planting a fig tree. Well, but again, he planted, but the problem, he did not harvest. The worst here is that when the master came and asked him about the fruit, he didn't uh, know what to say. But again, all he said, was again, let me dig once again. Let me fertilize it. And give me more time. You know what? That is the grace of God. Because, again, when it comes to farming, uh, I have the idea because we have a farm. So, so I have the idea about when it comes to uh, planting rice. And even uh, corn at the same time. But again, it really takes time. You really have to wait. You really have to cultivate those plants in order for these plants to produce well. You are, there is a right way and also there is a wrong way to go about farming. And then later on, you either get it right or you starve. Because you will not be able to get a harvest. And the same thing. In our spiritual life. Remember that God created opportunities. But it's up to you. If you're going to choose the right or the wrong. Remember this principle. Success requires no expectation, explanations. And failures permits no alibis. But again. God is equal to all. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 45. That ye may be the children of your Father, which is in heaven. For he maketh his Son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain to the, uh, on the unjust and on the unjust. Amen? You know what? Some of us may, may ask some questions or may uh, uh, have this uh, difficulty in life. Why is it that those people who, uh, who destroyed the church, are blessed? But the question, are you sure that they're blessed? Why is it that as if they have a higher salary compared to us? Maybe there are some questions that may uh, incur in in your minds. But again, hey, God knows what He is doing. You know, you might be in that position, but there are times that when success requires it of you, and that is the secret that many missed too. You know, sometimes that key to your success is taking one step back before you do anything else. For a spiritual life, it can be like that. But take note that you cannot plan what opportunities God will give to you. You cannot plan it ahead. All you can do is, all you can do is to choose wisely from the, the opportunities before you. That's why if we have these opportunities, we have to grab it and do something for it and be faithful for it. Hindi mo sinisira. Hindi mo sinasayang ang mga pagkakataong ito. 
And that's what you want to do, amen? You might say, ah, I am barren financially right now. Well, lahat naman tayo eh. You all take note. But we want to reverse it. You will also barren emotionally. Nalulungkot ako. Kailan kayo sasagutin? Naiwa? Then, napunta lang tayo. Pwede ka sali yun. <laughs> but we want to do something about it. But again, if you are barren spiritually, there is a God. There are not, uh, these are nothing more than what we call symptoms inside you. But again, you can change who you are by the grace of God. By God's grace, and you can change what you are. And by changing what goes inside your mind. And that is why we have this parable, the fig tree. It is sweet in its uh, simplicity, yet it is powerful in its practicality. Now, let's go to our text. Let us study this point number one. In verse 6 and 7, He spake also this parable, A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came and sought fruit thereon, and found none. Then said he unto the dresser of his vineyard, Behold, these three years I come, seeking fruit on this fig tree, and find none. Cut it down, why cumbereth it the ground? Point number one, you have to understand the value of time. Time, amen? In any given day, you can do many things. Right? You know the time when it comes to breakfast, dinner, oh, no, no, dinner, sakang lunch, then nagtitipid kasi. Kasi pandemic, di ba? Okay. <laughs> but again, understand the value of time. You also know the, how, the several hours of your sleep. Or you might watch the news. Some of you might uh, be doing uh, many things. You might be doing a uh, prayer and meditation. Your daily devotional time. Amen. And, there also, uh, and you also you know you will spend uh, more time as well in brushing your teeth, okay, combing your hair, especially the women, amen? Combing the hair, no? cooking, changing clothes, cleaning. We, all, we do all of these things. But again, the question is, after that, what will you do? Understand the, ta- the value of time. According to the Bureau of Statistics, okay, most, uh, no, Virgil okay, uh, this is only for the Bureau of Statistics, okay? Most Americans spend most of their time in three ways. Sleeping, working, Watching TV. I don't know if uh, this is really true, but uh, Jeremiah. Okay? <laughs> but for us Filipinos, oh. <laughs> eating, <laughs> sleeping as well, okay? and uh, working, of course. And one more thing. Facebooking. <laughs> now, the question is, would you say that it is a good investment in your life? Or a good is- investment of your time? Now, let's read Ephesians chapter 5, 15 to 16. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. 
redeeming the time because the days are evil. This is very uh, easy to understand. No? It tells us to size the opportunity for the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? It isn't to make the most of the time, but to make the most of the time. And make the most of the opportunity for Jesus Christ. So in other words, time is, is stewardship responsibility. Amen? And Jesus here makes a point here in this, uh, ver in this chapter, here in these verses, that there is a cost incurred for wasting time. Right? And I believe nobody is doing uh, something uh, uh, different here. We will not do anything. All you have to do is just uh, wait outside and then try to count how many cars will be passing by. One, two, three. Oh. Take note that again, and it says here in this verse, here in our text, the owner here became frustrated with the fig tree because for three years here in our text, it did not produce fruit. It's very frustrating sometimes. You know what? To tell you honestly, uh, I kept on praying to God, Lord, Please help us. Every time we go to the villages, I really don't know if who are those people who are really sane. It's really frustrating sometimes, but again, God knows what He is doing. We come and preaching the Word of God. You repent. Believe the Lord Jesus Christ. Accept Him as your personal Lord and Savior. And then they will just say, the next time, again, it takes time. One visitor who came here before, that was I think 10 years ago or 7 years ago, he said, it's easy to gather people. I was listening. But I will not mention his name. Maybe he's watching right now. I said, sir, you don't, you don't know what you're uh, saying, sir. I said, here in Cambodia, it's different compared to the Philippines. Yes, we have the same God that we're serving, but you have also to consider okay, their culture here in Cambodia. Yes, it's easy to invite people. We can do that. Yes, we can. But again, what we're trying to emphasize is that these people must but really understand about salvation. They must really understand what the Bible is telling. It's explaining to them. But again, at the end of the day, from the village and then when we arrive back home, I'm, I'm so thankful and blessed because I said, Lord, thank you for giving me this opportunity to serve these people. Yes, we might not see the fruit instantly. But again, later on, we will see the fruit. But again, you have to understand that the logical response here, after the owner of the farm became frustrated, okay, he might say, why use this uh, fat land for this fruitless tree? Of course, we cannot blame the owner. But you have to understand that you cannot do anything in life you want. And, and also, you cannot do everything in life. Take note that it's up to you to choose wisely. Understand the value of time. Let's read verse 7. Then, the, then said he unto the dresser of his vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. Cut it down. Why cumbereth it the ground? Take note here that Jesus is saying the purpose, the purpose of the tree is to what? 
produce. Now, and it's also the same. It is also the same thing in our spiritual life. Jesus here explained this in his in his parable that follows the four soils. You know the four soils, right? Take note that we are not fruit inspectors, as some say. As some says. No. We are fruit what producers, as Jesus says. Here in verse 23 of Matthew chapter 13. Let's go there, please. Matthew 13, verse 23. But he that received seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit. And bringeth fruit forth, some an hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. So when it comes to barrenness or blessedness, time matters. Amen. Not black, not black lives matters. Time matters. Point number two. I'm not going to stay long. You look like hungry right now. And I don't want to destroy it. But he that... Uh, let's proceed to verse 8. Let's proceed there, please. And he answering said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also, till I shall dig about it and dung it. Point number 2. You must understand the value of good advice. Amen? I can feel the frustration of the uh, owner. I knew that. Because when we plant when, uh, corn in our farm, my father will always uh, uh, check the farm every day. Whether those seeds will produce uh, fruit, uh, not fruit right away, but those stems or those leaves on it. At the same time, while planting those corn in the field, those weeds will also grow at the same time. It's not easy. Especially when it comes, uh, when there's a strong rain. Oh, I know the frustration of my father. He will go right away to the farm and check if all of those uh, plants were still standing. But again, recognize the value of good advice. You have to understand that if someone asked you to do something for the Lord, to be faithful in serving the Lord, we have to take heed on it. If somebody will tell you to read the Word of God, to meditate the Word of God, you know that it is right, you know that it is good, you know that it is all for your own good, then take heed of that good advice. Why? Because some people can only learn one way, and that is the hard way. And it takes time, and it takes them a long time to learn. It takes time. Yes. It takes time for those villagers to really learn and understand the word of God. But it doesn't mean that we're going to stop. We have to continue what we're doing for the Lord. Yes. Eh nga, bibisita lang kami doon. Minsan, nandun na sila, mag-gather na yan. But again, I'm really happy. At kailan hindi ako nang hinayang yeah, to minister these people. You know, no one has to do. I, I, what I'm trying to say that other people will not take heed to what the Lord is trying to, uh, uh, to do in their lives. They will not listen to it. Others will, might reject it. But again, in Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10. In Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. 
That's why if you just want to get by in this life, okay, I will tell you, you don't have to listen to anyone. If, that, if that's your choice, again, just do what you want. Go where you want. Believe what you want. But again, it takes the consequences. But if your purpose is for Jesus, and if you want Jesus in your life, take note, you do what He wants. Amen? You go where He says, and you change your thinking to match His thinking. That's it. Yes, you might say, you might say, okay, it's easy to really follow. Okay? It's easy to say yes, but it's so hard to apply it. But again, Jesus always gives good advice. And he challenges us to what? To step out in faith, to get on our feet moving so that our mind will follow. Amen. The value of good advice. Know what? According to Albert Einstein, you know Albert Einstein, right? Amen. Kalala natin yan, nagtitinda ng isda dyan sa palengke. We cannot solve our problems with the same thinking we used when we created them. Remember that Jesus can bless us. Amen? Jesus can and Jesus will bless you. But God wants your effort as well. You're going to just sit down and wait that the that the blessing will come from heaven and then it will be given on you while you are sitting down. You must exert effort at the same time. Amen? Do you know right now we have more conveniences compared to those uh, people uh, in the old times? Amen? And we have more religious instructions. But sad to say, other people will really not uh, take heed on it. And they, they will really try to impose what they really wanted to have in their lives. It's so sad. These people really know the proper way. These people really understand what the Bible is instructing us. But they are what? But they were rejected. Uh, they, they kept on rejecting it. Thinking that they knowledgeable to compare to other people the value of good advice that's why you have to also consider those people around us those friends around us whether these, these people will give us good advice or not this is really sad why not sit down and settle the matter They know what to do. But the problem is that they listened to a wrong advice. What was the purpose of the Word of God? What was the purpose of our meditation? What was the purpose of reading the Word of God? And then we still uh, try to do our own way. It's useless, anyway. But having those things doesn't mean that God will bless you at all. Take note of that. We must do what He says to do. Take note that He gives us opportunity, but you must choose wisely. Good advice. Oh. One of my class classmates in high school uh, were posting uh, some of our old photos. Uh, during those days uh, I think uh, those were the days when uh, we had our swimming 
But uh, my parents didn't allow me to join with my classmates because my parents were very strict. So I said, wow. And then my, one of my classmates uh, commented on, on the uh, post that was posted and said, oh, reason, uh, I'm sorry. Pero hindi ka nakasama sa time na ito. Sabi ko, strict yung parents ko. Well, again, I'm so thankful. No. Kahit ganun yung mga parents ko, okay. Okay. I, I listen to their advice. No. <laughs> Naalala ko na yung motor. <laughs> okay. But again, advice is really important. Value good advice. You know what? Here in our church, God has given to us the man of God who can advise us okay, in accordance to His word. You have to listen. There are also some people that will be used by God as an encourager. Listen to the good advice. Oh, it is really important. And lastly, in verse 9. And if it bear fruit, well, and if not, then after that thou shalt cut it down. Lastly, we must understand the value of service. Okay. Now, a question is that, have you ever uh, stopped to think how gracious God really is? That's why, yes, I... That's why the one that I posted on our uh, group chat, I said, hey, we're not here to, uh, to tell to the people that God really answered, answers prayer. But again, we are here as what? An instrument, as a monumental instrument of God's grace. The reason why we are here right now, it is only because of the grace of God. Take note that here in this text, for, for how many years this tree had done nothing? Looks like it's useless. But you know what? That tree has, I mean, has its own purpose or uses. The same thing in us. You might think that you, I am barren right now. I, as if I am not fruitful anymore. As if nothing is happening in my life now. No. Hey, just wait for the right time. And understand the value of service to the Lord. And I said to my wife, hey. I, I'm not saying hey. Okay. I told my wife, hey, uh, my prayer is that God will use us. That's my prayer. To become effective to become useful in the ministry. You know what? Just take up space. And again, take note here. He said, it's useless. It is just taking up space. We can uh, you put other plant here that can bear uh, fruit or can, that can produce fruit. But again here, he said, the tree means the entire point of its life. So it's useless. But again, Yet, God says, All right, I will give you a little more time. You know, that is our God. Amen? Amen. There is a purpose to your life. And in all the stages of your life. Amen? That's why we have to understand that uh, there are many people who are not listening to what God is telling them. Now, the question is, who will you listen to? Why? Too many times we hear some say, uh, how some things can't be done. Bakit nag-stay pa kayo sa church? Wala namang mangyayari. Hey! This is the work of God. And the work of God will always be preserved. Take note that they, the head of the church is the Lord Jesus Christ. 
And no person or no people can never try to destroy the work of God. Take note of that. Take note that God is not the God of the phrase, it can't be done. He is not the God uh, that will uh, just uh, set aside his children. Listen very carefully. Hindus chapter here in this verse. What he needs to see from us is what? How it can be done. Amen? And not to get out of what God is doing, but to get it on what he is doing. And never listen to anybody who can say it can't be done. No. Always put that in your hearts. We have some songs that we can hear every Sunday. I am happy in the service of the king. And I hope that we are really happy in serving our king. Yes, dumarating ang kalungkutan, but again, we still must be happy in serving him. The value of a service. That's why, if you keep on listening to those negative things, then you will be affected by those efforts that they've been doing. They're not actually helping you, but they are hurting you. Take note that God wins at everything, and God always succeeds. He's never short in time. He's never short in blessings. And he is never short when it comes to opportunities in life. My family is not rich. But again, one thing that I can uh, be proud of my family is that they led me into the church. Every Sunday, kahit inaantok na kami, gigisingin kami, church na tayo, church na tayo. That's what my parents taught me about. To be faithful in the service of the King. Now what? Sabi ko nga, Sasayang ang ba natin ang pagkakataong ito? Do we really need to complain? Because of what is happening around us. You know, we are barren when it is God who wants. But again, at the same time, even in the midst of those barrenness, there are lots of, I would say, opportunities and blessings along the way. That's why many people will not really understand us. I keep on going to the church every Sunday, prayer meeting every Wednesday, going to the villages every Saturday. What? They will not understand that. But that is our joy and our service towards our King of Kings. You know what? It is interesting to note that here in this text, let's go back there please. That in this text, it is unfinished. We, we don't really know from the text what happened after a year. We don't know. If the fig tree produced or not. It leaves us this question. Did the tree ever become fruitful? What do you think will be the ending should be? But you know, now, with regards to our life and our service towards our King, if your life finished that parable, how would it end? Maybe Jesus left it that way on purpose for us to think 
about it. In verse 9, And if it bear fruit, well, and if not, then after that thou shalt cut it down. But take note, let us start producing. Amen. And create an ending that is a blessing. By getting in and rather than going out or running out what he has called us to do. Yes. Are you fruitful in our service towards our God? But then again, hey, if you are barren right now, just wait for the right time. And you will produce such blessings in such a way that God has designed in your life. Never give up. Later on, we will see the fruit. Amen. Don't be discouraged. Really, discouragement is already a, uh, a part of our life. But for you to continue to be discouraged, knowing that we have a powerful, a loving God and a gracious God would be a big question mark. Let's serve the Lord for the rest of our lives. Amen. Again, as we end here, I don't know which part of the message uh, God spoke to you, but I hope you will put this message in our in your hearts and let the work, let the Holy Spirit work in you. Before I will call Pastor, shall we all stand? Let us pray. Our loving Father, thank you once again, Lord God, for this challenge.